finally going to get this thing out on the road. This is the 997.1911 Carrera 4 that I've been promising and promising and promising. Uh, recently I did a repair job on this thing. Uh, Otto Strauss over in Newport was very kind enough to help me out and, and, and really gave me good service and made sure my car was in tip top shape. So the confidence is back to drive it the way it's meant to be. Obviously if you get a problem with one of these cars you don't just drive it and hope it's not that bad. It's, it's always a cause effect situation so it's better just to put it away, get it repaired, and make sure everything's doing and working the way it should be. So now the thing is where it needs to be. I'm excited to get it on the road. I know you guys have been waiting for it. The Porsche love is really high and I'm appreciating because mine is high as well. So let's go out for a ride. I'm going to tell you about what I love about this car, what I don't love about this car. That part will shock you. Um, and my overall impression compared to other 911s, the ones that preceded it, the 993 and the 996. So we'll take a ride and go through some really fun roads and just see what it's all about. That's next. Oh, we'll drive. I've had this car for a little over two years and there's not really been a moment where I felt like it doesn't deliver on the promise or that it doesn't give me the driving thrill that I expected from it. Originally when I planned to buy a Porsche, and that was for my specific birthday uh, when I hit 40 something and I was going to wait and then I found this car a year earlier than my plan. And anyone who knows me knows that if I just say, if I say I'm just going to go look at a car, I'm probably in the position to say I'm going to buy that car. So I went to just look at this car. An hour later, I'm calling my wife. Hey, so uh, she's like, you bought a car. How did you know that? Well, because I told her I was just going to go look at it. But at any rate, when I drove it, I didn't feel like there was something amiss. Meaning that I didn't think that not getting the S was gonna be a downgrade or there's gonna be a, a shortfall. Once you drive this car, you realize that where you would actually get more out of an S is not gonna necessarily make your driving experience that much better from an average driver's standpoint. On a track, well, yeah, you're gonna be quicker in your lap times. Zero to 60, you might beat another person who doesn't have quite the horsepower that your car has. All right, so those things are obviously significant. On spec sheets, when you put your butt in the seat, when you drive it through the corners, when you're going through the gears, that stuff doesn't really matter. I mean, I'm not calculating how quickly the car goes from zero to 60 when I'm in a situation like that. Honestly, I'm not. I'm thinking, are there any cops around? How fast am I going? And man, this is freaking fun. That's my train of thought. Yours could be different. If that's a big deal to you is that knowing that, oh, I got the S and the S is better and all that stuff is important. Okay, I get it. Then you get the S. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with wanting the S. I want an S. I want a newer S. Because those are quite awesome. But if you're looking to get into a Porsche, something a little more modern than the 996, for whatever reason you may or may not have an affinity for the 996, guess what? 997.1 is still pretty attainable. The market's starting to shift a little bit. And the weird thing about Porsches, particularly the newer ones that aren't classic yet, is they haven't quite, they haven't quite hit the uptick that you expect. It takes a while. 
No one buying a Porsche should expect to see an immediate return on that investment if it's not over 25 years old. Unless you're getting the GT3 RS or you're getting the R911R, which if you've got that already, great. If you don't have one, you shouldn't probably consider buying one for the sake of profitability. You, you will have missed that, that ship. But my point being, if you're getting a car that's fairly modern, post 2004, which is the end of the 996, buy it for enjoyment. And the price you're probably gonna pay is in the 30s. Right now these cars are ticking up to high 30s. I've seen a high mileage model, granted it was an S, but a high mileage model for you know somewhere in the 40s. And I thought, wow, that's pretty strong. I mean, I wasn't gonna criticize it, but it's possible that that car could be worth that. I mean, depending on what work has been done, the state of uh, condition, the owner record, it might be. And let's be honest, a high mileage car doesn't mean that it's a foregone car. Doesn't mean that it doesn't have the ability to still impress. If you've done all your work, acceleration is still acceleration, my friend. The reason the 911 is so amazingly quick is because all the transfer of the energy from the engine is straight on top of the wheels. It's not traveling from the front of the car, so there's no distance. It's not traveling through other mechanical parts like a long drive shaft, right? So you're not losing anything in that because the drive shaft has resistance. So when you think about where this engine sits, most of your power is pretty much going to the road. You don't have nearly the drop off in power transfer from engine power to brake power. You hit the accelerator, off it goes. It's just throwing the car forward. Now, someone asked me not too long ago, after I've had this car a while, what are my gripes? And to be perfectly honest, I was pretty hard pressed to find one. And you think it's surely, dude, there's gotta be one. How can you not have any gripes? Well, I just don't. I just don't. And it's, and it's really funny to me because there's always something, but there's not. Yeah, I've had to spend some money. How many cars have you ever owned didn't require some money to be spent? Tires aren't cheap. I had a non-M BMW that had run flats on it. Anybody knows about run flats? Those are not cheap tires. They're meant to take, they're meant to keep you going when you get a flat. I mean, let's, logic just dictates what that means. Okay, we're gonna get you out of sticky situation. There's a premium for that. I spent close to a grand buying four tires for that car. It was a 330i with a sport package, and it was a great car. Looked fantastic. Lots of fun to drive. Handled amazingly. Didn't do well on potholes. Not at all. But those tires were very expensive. So if you put it in perspective, yeah, everything's going to be a little bit more costly and you're going to have to do things. A tune up on this thing at a specialized service center. I mean, you should be ready to spend about $1,000 for a full tune up. Something's going to be more than that. But I'm not bitter about it. I know that whatever I did improved everything about the car and that gave me peace of mind when i'm driving this car hard that's when i really appreciate the money i spent it's money well spent and you know what somebody else will appreciate it too when you're ready to get out of it what have you done to it all the regular maintenance scheduled stuff a few other things do a clutch uh yeah i did a clutch did it go out no but i was told it needed to be done good on you that's worth at least $2,500 after the fact, once you've done the work and then driven it some more easily. You're probably going to spend three grand, $3,500 for that. And if you're in there, go ahead and do some other stuff if it's needed. If you got a 996, do the IMS if it hasn't been done. 
you're still around three thousand something dollars and that money will come back to you when you're ready to get out of it that's the thing about a 996 if you can prove you did the work you'll always get your money back and i promise you that car is going to go up in value like crazy i predict that that car is going to be one of the most sought after cars in 15 to 20 years why because it was the most talked about car if you follow any kind of hollywood nonsense people eat that shit up so if you're talking about a car that people keep talking about they don't like it's got controversy around it i'm pretty sure at some point people are going to talk about it years later hey you remember that ugly porsche the fried egg which is the dumbest reference i've ever heard how'd you get to an egg it's got a weird headlight that's all you got to say yeah you remember that car you know what i saw one the other day dude it's sweet a new generation is going to find that thing beautiful I find it beautiful, just because it's unique. So if you gotta spend a little money that doesn't make the taste of the, the fruit bitter, it just means that the fruit's fresher. And this thing right now, <laughs> it's very fresh, my friend. It's so quick. The real funny thing about Porsches to me, and this is the thing I get the most, you know, laughter out of, the Speedo. I mean, it's almost as small as the oil pressure gauge, right? I mean, the tack needs to be the biggest thing. You start at zero and then you're 25. There's a lot missed. There's no 55. There's 50 and 75 you got to do math in between that thankfully they put a digital readout on there so you can do it at a glance so when the officer pulls you over you're like uh officer i uh the speedo doesn't really have a 60 on it now, he's not going to know when you pull those top that you got digital so it kind of benefits you in that way possibly but it's just weird you take off and you're at 25 for not even a millisecond and then you're at 70 something, usually above 75. It happens a lot. And this is an everyday freaking car. I'm gonna go get milk later. Milk. you want to be when you're driving aggressively in one of these cars because that's where all the meat is and your and your acceleration at that point is so consistent you take it into a corner let it rev up engine brake come out of the corner and on you go a little song at the back a gurgling listerine whatever you want to associate it to it's just so freaking exciting. But it's so smooth in the way that it takes the corners. Blows my mind, honestly. So to my point, there's nothing I don't like about this car. I just told a lie. There's one thing I don't like about this car. The poor seam in the roof. It's convertible. Cabrio, and so when I wash it, which it really needs, or when it rains, to my surprise, the first time it happened to me, water came in. I expect that from my 1990 RX-7. All that rubber uh, insulation and whatnot, it's all crap. But on a 2006 911, I wouldn't expect that, honestly. But guess what? It leaks, baby. It leaks! But that's it. That's all. That's it. That's the only thing I don't like about this car. That's it. I kid you not. I'm not just saying that. I'm not... Porsche isn't paying me right now. 
Of course, if you'd like to pay me right now, I'd be glad to receive that. But I'm not. I'm not kidding. I, there's nothing I don't like about this car. Or should I say, there's nothing I dislike about this car. Yeah, it's pretty darn great. I'm really glad I had a chance to have this car. This is the first Porsche I ever bought. So it's kind of special to me in a way. It's not special in the sense that I won't be able to let it go. Um, I mean, because the thing is, there's always another Porsche Thrill waiting. And there are a lot of them. There are a lot of them. I think the, high, the highest or the most clim climactic Porsche experience for me so far is the 993. To me, that is probably the epitome of the Porsche 911 lineup. It's, I mean, I think there are other cars that are significant. Um, you know, the old 70s SC, that's a pretty special car. Uh, the RS, there are a lot of them out there. But I think for me, everything now is going to be moving forward. With the 993, I've got a deep sense of heritage of the 911 brand and something that I can really use as a benchmark of what everything else I drive in 911-ville should be like. And that car, I think, set the tone for everything that the new Porsches are. I think it's the one car that, if you look back, is really imperative to everything that the evolution of the 911 has come to be. So, for me, it's now, you know, 997.2 GTS. It's a car quite, quite fancy. Um... But, you know, the 991s, I mean, there's so many out there. The new cars with the, the turbo engines, I'm talking about the non-turbo model. That's going to be interesting to experience. The four cylinders, I mean, there's a whole horizon of things to explore. But uh, if I didn't ever get rid of this car, to be honest, I don't think I'd be disappointed that I didn't go any further. I... I'm serious when I say that. I I could drive this car for the rest of my, you know, driving days, so to speak. And I'd be perfectly happy in this one as my weekend getaway. Drop the top, it ain't raining. It's a good time. Top up, it's still a beautiful design with a convertible. Um, and it just, it just drives so nicely. It's everything I thought it would be. And I'm very happy about that. One of my favorite things about this car, aside from its looks, its handling, its engine, quality. Car. And there are 
better ones out there. But for what this is, when this was out, this is pretty impressive. And Porsche has been doing this for a long time. They're not, you know, striking out on the first try with something. I mean, they've been doing all-wheel drive for a while. And every iteration gets better. Everything they put out has been pretty good. And this being as good as it is, I'm sure that what came before it was pretty good. This is pretty damn good. And I'm sure the latter ones are absolutely amazing, especially with that rear steering characteristic that they have now. Oh, man. It just pulls you through the corner and then out of the corner. The front wheels dig in and it's like, all right, let's go. It's great. It is so great. really an open road. I mean, there's a lot of traffic on this road, but you get those moments where you can just have at it. And if only for just a moment, it's really invigorating. And given how it performed just there, you know, this is a convertible, a cabrio. It's not really suited for track. I mean, honestly, it's heavier, it's noisier, it's less rigid, but I'm so confident in the way this thing goes about its business, I think I would do it. I think I would take on the track with this car. And it wouldn't be about lap times, it wouldn't be about besting anybody else's or, or any of that. It would just be about driving it at the limits that I'll never get to do here on these roads. And I'd be 100% satisfied with it, as it is. I've modified nothing on this car. There's no intake. There may be a K&N air filter in there. I've never even looked. I've not put one in it. The exhaust is a performance exhaust. It's a factory install feature. The button in, in here indicates that it came from Porsche. Because that was an add-on item. Man, this came off of the Carrera S, and it sounds amazing on this 3.6. Now, if I were to do it all over again, would I get the S? Well, yeah, absolutely. I like this car a lot. I like the Carrera S a lot more because it is more. But do I regret not getting it over this? Hell no. For this being my first 911, I don't think I could have gone wrong. I mean, if I'd have gotten a 996, I don't think I could have gone wrong. But this car is just so much better in every way. Engine's got a little bit more juice. Not much. It's still the same 3.6, but just a little bit more. interior in this car is so far beyond anything that the Porsche has been prior to it. And that makes sense, right? The, the evolution of all brands models should have some upgrade sort of characteristic when they come out with the new model. It should be. But when you think about the 996 as an improvement on the 993, I'm not sure I'm there. The 996 is a very unique interior, and it was meant to be a cleaner layout, a little bit more form-fitting and ergonomic, but I don't think it was necessarily better. It does look like a classic car, so when it becomes classic, it would be appropriate. But when you step into this car, or sit into this car, I should say, you're almost transported to a time even beyond the generation prior. 
it's almost as if the 996 was more of a 90s, early 90s or 80s interior. Because honestly, it looked like it could be right there beside the old Chevrolet interiors. Which if you have been in any old Chevrolets from the 80s, you know it was pretty pathetic. The Porsche wasn't pathetic, but it wasn't riveting. And it's like they went straight from the 80s to 2006 from that car to this car. And we're talking less than 10 years apart. The 996 ended in 2004. This car came in in 2005 with the exception of the GT3 and the Turbo. And you can tell Porsche did a lot of homework. I mean, the interior of this car, when I get inside of this car, I mean, I feel like I'm in a newer car for sure, but it doesn't feel dated. I mean, it's it's so well laid out. I mean, it's very inviting to where if I never got into a newer car, I'd never think that newer cars looked any better. Fit and finish wise, there are some gripes, but as I mentioned before, there's nothing about this car that I don't like other than the leaky roof. But it's not taken away from my enjoyment of this car. Compared to the 993, it's just as comfortable. Maybe a little more because you have an armrest. Obviously, the the interior, as I said, is more ergonomic. It's more form and function, so everything is more accommodating, accessible, clear and easy to read, very visible, light of sight. This feels like a premium car. it took so long to do the video but I had to do the repair and I still don't know what the hell that thing was so is this little rubber bearing or bushing goes somewhere in the drive shaft somewhere in there I didn't have a, a main seal leak which is what I thought it was because the oil was it's quite a bit coming out it's interesting that that little thing fixed it but an interesting repair and, and, and it's done and so I feel completely confident to drive the snot out of this thing and that's what they're meant to be you know driven like that's how you're meant to drive them just they come from Germany man they got an autobahn you open your car up and just go so this is what this thing is made for and, and I enjoy doing it let me just tell you 